Hello, hello. Hi, Gonzo. Hello. Good afternoon. There you go. You should hear me now. Hi. Yeah. And War. Hello, my good friend and buddy. I would like to see your face. Welcome, and uh, thank you for being here. So today I wanted to start the day off, um, skipping the music. I couldn't decide on a Final Fantasy song or just really in general a song that's copyright free. But one of these days we'll have something something good. But uh, So what I wanted to do is going forward just try to do more smaller point releases. I merged 5.3 this morning, tagged it, pushed it up. And by, you know, by the end of the stream today or at the latest tomorrow, we're going to tag 5.4, you know, push it up there just because the size, I mean, the, there's like pushing a hundred changes, you know, and it's like it's stressing me out. You know, I can imagine how people look at that and be like, oh my God. Uh, what was that 8-bit Final Fantasy cover band that gave you a CD back in the day? 8-bit? Uh, are you talking about Power Glove? Maybe they did like Zelda and Mega Man and F Zero and a bunch of other stuff too. Probably Power Glove. They have like a Final Fantasy IV medley that is like power metal. Yeah, I'll send you a link to some YouTube stuff. Oh yeah, you saw Gonzo saw Power Glove live. Hell yeah, that's awesome. They're so good, and it's just like Red Wings over Baron. Nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah, actually, Final Fantasy IV Ultima is, like, on my two playlist. If you've never heard of that ROM hack, look it up. Final Fantasy IV Ultima. Just the best take on Final Fantasy IV, in my opinion. But they take, they take a lot of liberties. They add a lot of stuff. I won't say anything more, but um, it's so good. You can tell these people love Final Fantasy IV on the level that, you know, we love Morrowind, for example. I can really feel that there. So, yeah. Anyway, on to the Morrowind. Um, yeah, so I wanted to start. We're going to put a note on the contact and feedback form. And just kind of, because I have like an email backlog. Let me, whoop, I have like an email backlog of, let's see. Uh, where is it? Okay, email. 428 emails right now. And it's like, ooh, you know, I want people to reach out to me and feel like they can reach out to me. But I also like don't have enough time in the day, even if I wanted to just sit here and respond to emails um, so I'm going to put a note on there and just kind of let people know there's a long turnaround town time, but I would want to also encourage people to hop onto the discord. Like if they want to talk right now, if they got a comment right now, hop onto the discord, you know, and you'll certainly hear from me. Um, and also anybody else who's in there, you know, which is the, the advantage of doing that. So anyway, let's open up that code right now. Uh, oh yeah. I think I was trying to be clever back in the day. And I was trying to break the code up in a way that just doesn't make sense for this project. Okay, good, good. This is the page, I think. Let's go to the let's go to the shell. And this is a page we can edit without, you know, having to grind the website again and again and again. So let's find the contact button in. And by the way, since I got a captive audience here, one of the things I really want to do really soon got itchy for some reason, uh, is like re reassess this page because like this start here kind of setup is like probably really disorienting for somebody who's just coming to the website for the first time. Cause like, you know, do you start with the guides? Do you start with the, you know, I just feel like, um, these pages are good underneath these buttons, but maybe the ordering or I don't know, we could be more thoughtful in how we do things. And I want to, you know, eventually you get to doing that, you know, when we take a break from all the relentless mod list hacking. So anyways, back to the contact form. And just so we know, you know, a sanity check, this is the right page. I'll say, oi, hi. That's the page. Boom, just refresh it and you see your change right there. So I'm thinking... Takeaway, thanks for visiting here. And then put it above that. Kind of a... Is that... bit what? Okay. Is that base... War says... Is that basically a one-click mod value menu? What are you talking about? The page we're looking at now? Or other parts of the website you could say are like that? Please clarify for me, friend. 
the previous one. Oh, this. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, let's go back to this. That's a great question. You know, this is just the, when you go to the website, and, and honestly, I'm not really sure if we look at, I'm not really sure how people arrive at the website. And if we look at the visitor statistics, we actually see that at least in the past week, more people are visiting directly to the total overhaul page than even just the main page. But nonetheless, this is the page I was talking about. Gonzo says, when I was getting started, I just wish there was a one-page explanation of what the workflow is like for installing mods in OpenMW. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Good feedback. It's not really all that complicated when it comes to it, but yeah, yeah, hurdle. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there was an RTFM hurdle to get over. Gonzo, that's the feedback I was looking for. Thank you. And that's exactly the goal that I have with, with this redesign in mind and why I think we have to be thoughtful about it, but I think we can. In, it's not going to be hard to improve what we have now because, yeah, it's just confusing. And, and this kind of like grew over time with me sort of just slapping and removing, slapping things in, taking things out, uh, you know, without putting a lot of thought into it, you know, because as I say a lot, I never really expected anybody to look at the website. So going back to here, let's, um, let's go back to my Emacs here. All right. Let's say uh, thanks for visiting indeed. Um, we're going to pull that up into the other pair. Click a button. Oh, and War says click a button and it says install this and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that too. That is another, you know, there should be something succinct but direct but also detailed. Um, and I think you can, we can have like a hierarchy of pages. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, man. That's good. That's a good kind of feedback too. That's for guys like me. He says, yeah, I mean, and this is something that is a, you know, a dilemma for me professionally. At, at my day job which is like how do you as like a, a knowledgeable person on any subject how do you put yourself in the mind of somebody who is not knowledgeable and it's difficult if you've never thought about it it's difficult you know so how do I convey to somebody who doesn't know what I know what I know in a way that makes sense it's a very hard problem to solve but it's I've been lucky enough to have the opportunity to really try and crack the problem uh, for, for this project you know I've been I did like I said I didn't expect people to use the website but I'm lucky enough people do Thanks for visiting. Please note that I always feel weird saying I. War says my knowledge, my knowledge of modding is basically just that. Go to the Nexus, click a button, use MO2 to sort load order. I mean, hey, you know, ideally that's it. You know, for OpenMW. Um I haven't used MO2 in a long time and definitely never for uh, OpenMW. But I'm sure that people have, you know, you can rig up. Yeah, I'm sure that you can rig up, you know, your sorting tool, your merging tool and all that stuff in there. I'm sure you can do that. Um, and I'm sure it's great. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of editing text files and stuff. You know, Warm, you know how I roll. So, Gonzo, maybe like a two-part page. The first part is an introduction to OpenMW structure. CFG files, data paths, yep, yep. The other half is how to specifically use a mod list on the site. Yeah, that's really good feedback. Wow, I mean, I've gotten such amazing, I gotta make sure to save this conversation, the stream chat here, because this is really good feedback. Uh, War says, oh, lol, I'd ask you if I had actual problems. Yes, I know. I love you. Okay, uh, let's see here. Back to what I was typing on here. I'm getting such great... <laughs> I'm getting such great feedback <laughs> about the the thing I wasn't trying to work on. So thanks to both of you. And again, I'm going to, before I close this window, I think the stream chat stays with the stream as long as it's on Twitch. So at least I have some time if I forget. But very good feedback. I'll create a, maybe I'll create an issue on GitLab. And I'll quote you guys. Cool, it does. Thank you, War. I'm, a I'm clearly a Twitch noob, as you saw when you came in. And I was like, ha, ha. Yeah, okay. Please, now, back to the text on the page. Please note that, uh, yeah, as I was saying, I feel I feel weird calling myself I on the page, but hey. Uh, the website, main, uh, and I also feel weird referring to myself in some kind of a third person. I just feel weird in general. Okay. As 
is a significant email backlog and it may take a <laughs> you get used to it yeah <laughs> thank you i appreciate that you know i've done the, a couple open mw release videos and atawalpa is my beloved partner on that project and he is a really rigorous partner and i will say like redoing things is hard because i don't like listening to myself very much <laughs> All right, you get used to it. You almost call yourself war in real life. Well, I won't go into detail about that. Website maintainer has a significant email backlog and it may take a very long time to get a response. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say, you know, please feel free to join the discord channel in order to more quickly in uh, interact with the community i got a couple uh let's see here i know i already have another couple discord links in the code. I have like, yeah, four different ones. Yeah, these are all different. No sense generating another one, I guess. Let's reuse this one. Because why not? Excuse me, sorry for sniffing into the mic. And... Oh my god. I don't know. Is that weird wording? I don't know. Let's see here. Oh, that's not the website I'm looking for. This is the one. Silly me. Okay. Uh, okay. I want to make this... Don't cringe about inline CSS. Okay, that's not hideous, I don't think. Discord channel, or I should say, or IRC too. You know, some folks don't want to use Discord. Note though, if you join the IRC channel, it is bridged to Discord, so you're kind of still, you know, using it. I'm actually really surprised at how much, you know, activity we get on IRC. It's at least once a week we see somebody pop in there, which is cool. Having the web interface, I think, makes it easy. And then people can discover Discord and join as they desire. Or IRC in order to interact with the community. I feel like that's a weird statement to interact with the community. What did I do? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Overwrite mode. Oh my gosh. Don't try this at home. Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of fruit juice and ponder the nature of these words it's so hard to convey do we even call it chat nowadays is that what the kids are calling it do we know I'm, you know 
All right. In the interest of not overthinking this too much and just achieving the goal, I'm going to go with that. For a long time, I was able to respond to emails, you know, pretty quickly. Um, but then, yeah, it just, like, accumulates fast. And this is, like, just over a year, you know, 400-some emails. So it's a good problem to have. But, whew, all right. All right, whoop. My web browser is not Emacs. All right, so we'll note, yeah, that I've already started the 5.4 branch. IRC order to – did I – whoop. Good call. Good call out there, uh, Gonzo. Join the uh, IRC. Words. Words are hard. English is my native language, and I still really stink at it. Please feel free to join the Discord channel or IRC in order to chat with the community. There we go. Thank you, kindly. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get that 5.4 action going. And let's go back up to GitLab here now. And as you can see, maybe you notice, maybe you don't, GitLab has yet another UI change that they're introducing. Don't seem to be able to collapse that sidebar anymore. Okay, um, so yeah, again, smaller, more frequent releases, um, you know. Let's let's keep it let's keep it strictly technical here and just point release 5.4. Not much to say, really. I don't think a description will be needed really on the merge request. I don't do merge commits. Um any, you know, related information should just go in a git commit when I commit them. So anyway, assign it to me. By the way, and Gonzo, I'm glad you're here cuz I wanted to mention this I want to make a sticky issue maybe. I wanted to mention it on Discord. I'll mention it right here. I was thinking about trying to gather people who are interested to be a review team. And what I mean by that is when I make changes to the website and I have these small merge requests, these small releases, that there are people who would kind of look at the changes you know, and okay, like, yeah, that's a big code diff there, but at least you can say, okay, that's the contact page, or you can ask me and I'll tell you that's the contact page. Maybe I could include a list of change pages. I don't know. But the point is somebody who's not me, like a like a website QA team, somebody who's not me could then go and, and you know, maybe we'd have it on the, on the beta. You know, I can freely wreck this website and make it awful. I got the red banner up there. I can do whatever I want. Uh, so anyway, it's something to keep in mind and, you know, um, would be a great way to help the project because <laughs> I make mistakes a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. So, Gonzo says, sounds like what I've been doing anyway, so count me in. And yeah, I agree. Uh, so cool, thank you. If you have a GitLab account, let me know or just uh, you know message me that on Discord and I'll add you as a reviewer and I'll get this review team thing going. That's exciting. Um, all right, well, we're going to open that merge request. Make one. Yeah, cool, cool. I think they, they have a couple different ways you can link accounts from elsewhere. So there we go, 5.4. Oh, and this is another thing I wanted to fix the... I don't know if this is interesting to do on the stream, but I have my web browser testing framework. Definitely needs fixing. It's like terrible code I wrote like eight years ago that doesn't work anymore and needs fixing, but I don't know if that's like something people want to watch on the stream. It's not really related to Morrowind. It's like a strictly a programming problem. All right, back to the list. Put a note, done. Okay, uh, let's do this one real quick because this one is very easy. 
And let's see here. Contact. We actually want to copy. No. Oh, you know what? I probably have. Yeah, footer. Okay. Yeah, I went a little off the deep end with like the layout of the project when I was first getting started. It was like crap everywhere. It's like, why is footer here and not by the other? I don't know. Don't ask me. Copy. There we go. Um, and so the what I mean by this is don't use font awesome for the copyright icon. And so if we go to the website, see down here, it's very, very small. But we got copyright 2023. And there's something in the back end that crunches the year. So it's like even at the stroke of whatever, wherever you are, it's going to have the right year. Maybe? I don't know. I got to hit up somebody in New Zealand. Because I'm curious, actually, if my back end does that. Anyway, I think it's UTC and the front end converts it. Anyway, not really relevant. You can see the symbol, though. The code for that is right here. And it is a picture given by Font Awesome. But there is actually an HTML escape character that does the same thing. I'm going to try and guess it. Copy. Boom! Guessed right. You can see right down there. It's basically... It looks a little different, but uh, another notable dis uh, distinction here is I can actually highlight it now. I don't know if you'd noticed before, but I could not highlight the font awesome picture. Quite like I can highlight the strictly HTML one. So boom, that's another one. Need for... It'll reduce the page size, maybe. I don't know if you're just automatically loading the font awesome stuff just by default. I mean, if we look at the inspector here. Oh, dear. Pop it out. There we go. The good old uh, network tab. This is what we want. Okay, we want to just make sure we disable cache here. And if we take a quick look, Font Awesome is a CSS file and a WAF file, which is a web font file. So I wonder, yeah, if you're just downloading all of everything anyway, and we're not really saving people bandwidth. In any in any rate, though, this is I think more better for a screen reader, um, you know, and people who are maybe blocking external stuff, you know, so it's built into their web browser. So good change, even if even if it seems like mundane. I'm gonna go ahead and push that one up. Ah, yes, uh, this is another kind of a, a mund seemingly mundane technical problem that the website has, but I can demonstrate it very easily for you. I've known about this for a while, and for whatever reason, I insisted on using a get, what is called a get verb. When you use HTTP websites and things like that, um, you're making specific kinds of requests. You can see down here, I got request get. Um, and that was so that I could do like things like this. Boom, and now I have this URL that's unique to your query. Seems pretty good, right? I can like select a bunch of mods. Or I can like select a lot of mods. And I got a big URL that I can like save and bookmark and everything. And it sounds really great, right? Until you do something like this. Ba -ba -ba, I'm going to use a total overhaul. But let's say I want to, I don't know. Maybe most people didn't know that they could do this. You can though. Oh my goodness. They're, most people aren't going to see this nonsense. But you can actually tweak the CFG generator query. If I hold the control key, for example, and click on, let's say, oop, abandon flat V2, all the stuff that is on the preset for the list is already selected. And by holding the control key and clicking on abandon flat V2, let's remove AOF containers because that's something I actually want to do. It's on the list somewhere in there. Yeah, you can totally tweak it, but wait, there's a problem. Um, and actually, I have to do this on the real website, so let's go here. There's a bit, there's a problem. It doesn't work to bury the lead, but let's make it not work. 
So yeah, that's a big problem, right? You didn't even know you could do that. Boom, you sure can. So let's go here, let's select that. Let's deselect that. Let's click Submit Query. Hoop. All right, all right, I swear it's broken, hang on. Maybe I like patchwork fixed it for good this time. Uh, all right, well, if it's actually fixed, I might debate just leaving it. So there's a web server parameter that says basically how big the URL can be. And if I copy this out of here, brace yourself. This is the URL. Okay. That's it. All of that. So I've got like some obscene web server configuration that probably you wouldn't want to use. <laughs> Frankie, yeah, you wouldn't if you were like had a website for your e-commerce or something you would if you were in your right mind you wouldn't do that this is all read only no personal information of any kind is at risk here just like somebody maybe overloading my little vm which okay um war says something i found whether or not someone will see it it's there you can point people at it when they ask for it but can't find it okay that's a really good point um just letting somebody know by the way you can do that you know um doesn't come up a lot actually or I don't think of it in the moment I think it will be perhaps beneficial to add another paragraph here maybe and say you know hey by the way you know you can you can do this and maybe I can link to the YouTube upload of this stream you know that little time segment um you know how, how long are we in right now uh whatever 27 minutes um yeah, wow. So I don't know. It works. It's massively obscene URL, but it works. And I mean, it doesn't really kill my web server, I don't think. Um, so maybe we're going to change this. Um, there's no need to do this. And let's instead... <laughs> uh, let's instead... Somebody said something funny on Discord. They pointed at uh, how... Um, OpenMW has support for up to 2,147,483,644 uh, plugins, which is, I assure you, more plugins that exist for Elder Scrolls games and Fallout games all combined. Um, so instead of doing this, we're going <laughs> to... That was a funny comment. Instead of doing this, we're going to just put a note about how you can customize the mod list this way. And... Um, if I hear from people that they end up breaking it, we might have to do the, the get to post thing. But for now, I, I think it is useful to be able to keep a URL link of your specific query. And I'm going to show how to do it right now. So let's uh, add a note about how to customize uh, mod list presets. All right. So let's go back to our whoop. I have a feeling. Did I? No. All right, uh, uh, we're playing the game of try to remember where the template lives because my clever self. Uh, there we go. All right, let's put a little bit of a smaller set up there because otherwise it'll just take too long to load we just need a really quick you know boom example here all right choose a preset Yeah, I mean, it does, say, it does say here, choose your mod set, control click, but, you know, that's pretty easy to miss, obviously. <laughs> um, I need a link to down here, though, to the query box. So, so or... Uh, okay. So now... By adding that ID to the form element, this is a little bit of HTML. We can say mod select, and it should take us directly down there. 
Blamo. And that's what we want. So let's go up here now. We have that link that's going to work. You may customize a mod preset by using control click. Select. All right. So now we are, you know, we are just unsuspecting user to the website using the CFG generator. Oh, what's this? Customize a preset. Okay. Control click. Okay. So yeah. And then you just, you know, one, two, three, four, control click, you know, and this is not the best user interface here. This little HTML select element with control click. However, it works. And you may select your, you may additionally uh, copy your URL out or bookmark it or whatever to kind of have a personalized link to your plugin loadout. And so, yeah, that's how you do that. Thank you for my CFG generator, watching my CFG generator TED Talk. I like that. That was a really good idea. And as we can see here, the diff, we just added a li one little paragraph. We gave the form an ID so it could be selectable with the, the pound sign URL that we're utilizing right here. I saw your question war. That's a great one. Okay, so war says, how hard is it to make one of those things where you select something from a list, click an arrow, and it moves it to a new list to the side? And he says, also, what was that previous page for? He was AFK doing stuff like an adult. How dare you? Cleaning the baby's room. Congrats again. That's exciting. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to answer the second question first. This page right here, this one, the CFG generator, basically, what's it for? It lets you, uh, let's come back to this. It lets you basically select some mods and you submit your query, and then it tells you kind of how to set up. Because as you know, perhaps from playing Bethesda games, you have um, like textures and meshes and stuff. Yep. And so this tells you how to how to do that, because um, not because the situation is, you know, with um, Fallout Three, New Vegas, Fallout Four, Skyrim, etc. Those games where folks typically use Mod Organizer Two, it makes reasonable sense to assume people are using Mod Organizer Two because they're uh, you know they're Windows games, and if you're running it in Wine, then hey, you know, like figure it out yourself. And people do indeed run Mod Organizer Two with Wine. I do not. I actually wrote my own shell script based system we'll get into that maybe another stream for mon managing mods for new vegas but for openmw it's a little bit different because openmw is available on windows of course it's available on mac it's available on linux bsd android forget android for now though because android handles all this stuff differently but openmw has features in the engine that other games that people use mod organizer 2 for don't have namely the ability to say you know, when you install Morrowind and you run Morrowind.exe, out of the box, it only knows about this data file. But OpenMW lets you say, hey, also load files from here and from here and from here. And so you have a data path load order that you got to think about. But then you also have the load order of your plugins and stuff. And you may be familiar with that too. Um, so anyway, I digress. Because there's people 
who might not be using Mod Organizer 2, maybe their operating system doesn't support it, um, this page would be useful to them. And because I'm one of those people, I actually made this page for myself a long time ago when the website was strictly just for me. Um, and I didn't imagine people would use it too. So um, here we are. And yeah, so that's that. Now going back to your other question, how hard is it to make one of those things where you select something from a list, click an arrow, and it moves to a new list on the side. So so like maybe we I click this and then uh, this thing opens up and just pretend this is like a list of mods I've selected. Something like that, right? Actually, uh, Ravenwing, I think, uh, is the individual from the OpenMW forums um, long ago suggested such a concept to me where maybe you are... Um, you know, maybe you're following a mod list or maybe you're just browsing mods um, and there might be like a shopping cart kind of concept where you build your own list. And kind of one of the things that's cool about that is that you could benefit from the site's database of, you know, this is our load order for data paths that we know is good and correct. This is our load order for plugins that we know is good and correct. We check it with various tools for sorting um, and yeah, people could sort of piecemeal their own thing. Uh, maybe there'd be like an add to mod list button. Shopping cart. <laughs> I'm a mod browser, shopping cart, constant crashing kind of guy. Yeah, uh, well, so I mean, you know, we would want this to obviously be usable um, and like make sense. But I think maybe that is in line with sort of what you were asking about. Definitely something I want to do. How hard would it be? Well, it's a lot of it's a lot of front end code, a lot of JavaScript. And one thing I've really tried to do with this website is make sure that everything works without JavaScript. And um so I would want to kind of continue the spirit of that. And so we would want to make sure that we do everything that would work without JavaScript. You know, you maybe like without JavaScript, you basically would have to accept I clicked the add to my cart button and it's going to load the page like this. It's not going to be slick. Like if you have JavaScript, the page won't have to all reload. Just a little bit of data will be sent over the wire. Um, something like that would be doable though. Um, you know, it's not totally outside of my wheelhouse. I like coding in JavaScript, but, uh, you know, for something like this, I wonder if we wouldn't want to leverage, um, some framework that's out there, you know, um, like Svelte, I think, is the Svelte JS. I think is the new, yeah, something like this. Um, we're not going to dive too deep, but yeah, this is a name that I've heard that I know people use, and so we would use something probably something like this, which would reduce the difficulty a lot. I wouldn't have to make a lot of the slow small pieces, you know, and I could just write the UI that's cool that I want, you know? So something to do definitely down the road. Um, but it's not a huge priority for me right now. Yeah, okay, Gonzo brings up a great point. I think maybe the biggest hurdle is you might not be able to rely on usage notes at that point. Use your own risk kind of a thing. So I think this is where, I and I was thinking about this the other day. This is where we could potentially thoughtfully extend the data format in the website for plugins. Oh, dear me. No. Somewhere here. I have... Do I skip over it? Or am I misremembering how the website works? Anyway. I was thinking we could extend this and we could... And so this is where it gets a little spicy because it's a slippery slope to put kind of logic in a format like YAML, which is what you see on the right here. But we could say like, you know if with foo esp you know uh 
we could try to do that. Um, something, something like this. And this is obviously not well formatted. YAML. Um, so yeah, we could do something like this, but this is getting a little, in my opinion, this is what MLOX does. If you've never looked at the rules, this is exactly what MLOX does. And I'm not saying it's bad. You know, you have to have some kind of a data format that can tell you things about other things. But, um, you know, we're essentially looking at recreating what MLOX does for better or for worse. So definitely a great idea, Gonzo, um, that you kind of led to with that question. But uh, I just – and it's something I've been thinking about, you know, um, if I don't actually have a – let's take a look in the database, actually. Let's um, – uh, If I don't actually have a database table for this, we should make one. Uh, oh, Let's see here. Oops. Huh, yeah. Uh, War says, I just remembered a thing that'll help you find stuff in chat if you want to marker in chat. Oh, okay. Point mark when you highlight the VOD. Oh, okay. Wow, cool. Thank you for pointing that out, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I don't know Jack about, unfortunately, Jack about Twitch. So hacks like that are very appreciated. Um, man, <laughs> how does my own website work? I have to just take a small dive here into figuring this out. Mod plugin order. This is where the magic happens. This function is where we read a YAML file for a list of names to assemble a global plugin load order. Thank you, past me. Probably could have inferred that from like seeing what it does, but you know. Right. So the file what this statement means is the state the file is read literally in order. Aha, okay. Okay, so I understand what I'm doing now. Okay. So, set mod plugin. Ooh, this is a little bit spaghetti, guys. We're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, okay. So, what I'm doing is taking the list of plugins, keeping a count, sticking that count as an attribute on the mod. There's a field on mods called has plugin that is either empty, if there are no plugins, or it is a key value of the number that I keep up here and the name of the plugin. And so I do some voodoo then when I'm crunching plugin load orders to, to basically say what mods do I have and sort by the... the you know, the, the key here, that's the number and order factoring in the fact that we might not be like completely in sequence. So that's how that all works. Extending it this way is going to take some thought, but it's something I want to do. You know, do we need to create a table for it or a field in the database? I don't know. I'm very cautious about extending the database because I know I'm already pushing the performance of the website, you know, into territories where it could become very, you know, slow loading. And I want to avoid that. Um, so anyway, this is a, it's a big, going to be a big project. It's on my mind. It's doable. I know it is, but it's going to take a while. So um, let's go ahead and undo this though before I like blow up a deploy. And let's go ahead and uh, do that. And let's open our plan document. All right. Um, I mean, I'm happy with the comment that I put on there. Moving along here, because we're approaching the top of the first hour. Um, there was a very interesting discussion on Discord, actually, just prior to beginning the stream. Um, and I have a vague, as I said on Discord, I have a very vague recollection of noticing this when I started to use BCOM, which war for your edification stands for beautiful cities of Morrowind and further for your edification. It is a collection of city mods for Morrowind that basically covers all of the cities and so thoughtfully made by one of the most passionate members of the community who knows the lore 
probably better than basically everybody and cares about the game and we're lucky to have somebody like that making content for us 21 years after the game came out but yeah so bcom beautiful cities of morrowind if you play uh morrowind again you will use this mod you just will ah and we got a failure there of course ranting about how great bcom is i i uh, angered the code gods starting to lose my voice a little bit BCOM Vivek is a hell of a thing, says Gonzo Games. You know, I agree completely. There is another mod that is made with BCOM in mind. I believe it's called Vivek the God the City. And somebody brought it to my attention about six months ago, and I was like, wow, that looks amazing. But things that have murky compatibility with BCOM make me nervous, and I don't like to stir the pot too much. War says that'll happen. You know it will. Okay? Don't try to get out of it. But anyway, Vivek, the god, the city. Let's see if I have a bookmark here. We can look at it. Oh, God. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Like, actually expands on BCOM. <laughs> losing my voice. Talking about losing my voice, but yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so just a very quick look but yeah you can see already we've got you know open cantons cantons more than i think you see with bcom very bcom-esque but also i think it builds on it a little bit glass canton option oh that's cool yeah it looks like uh Tolvanian, lalu canton glass Oh, yeah, ESO. He says, oh, wild. That explains the design of the starting hub in ESO. So I've never played ESO. Uh, obviously, you have. But uh, I'm guessing Vivek City prominently featured. Yeah, look at this interior. That's cool. One of these days, we'll look at it, though. Um, you know, the individual who showed it to me really, really enjoyed it. They were real excited about it, and I just I've slept on it for a minute. Um, but, yeah, it looks really great. Vivek, God the City soon I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark that I am already tracking it all right we got our website crunching updated contact form we already looked at that CFG generator we're looking at that you can customize a preset by using control click uh, Gonzo says only seen streams but Morrowind looks so good in ESL Red Mountain is stunning yeah I've seen it oof Really wish I liked the combat. I feel like that's a common complaint with Morrowind. <laughs> um, you just got to learn to love it or love the rest of the game more than you dislike the combat. Yeah, but you told me you didn't like Breath of the Wild War, so you're not actually my friend. In ESO. Yeah, well, yeah, that's stuff I was, yeah. <laughs> All right. Back to the business here, though. Yeah. I'll take standard Elder Scrolls combat. ESO is just, uh, well, okay, but what's standard Elder Scrolls combat for you and what's standard Elder Scrolls combat for me might be two different things. I don't know if you remember Morrowind combat. We'll leave it at that. I wanted to actually test this theory, though. Yeah, indeed. War says that's fair. Let's, uh, let's, da -da -da, minimal performance. Oh, yeah, and something I thought we might do, too, on the stream... If I don't do it on the stream, I'm going to do it today. But Gonzo, you might be aware of some of the issues we had with the BCOM dynamic buildings patch. Um, somebody was able to break it on Discord that I cannot reproduce, but nonetheless, they broke it. And they did notice some problems. I don't include uh, the Ghostly GG plugin, which I don't even know I should or not. But in any case, I was suggested by Random Pal themselves about a better implementation. And I don't know, maybe we could bang that out in the, in the second hour. We can actually like hack on the plugin. I might actually do that. But first, let's look at this. And we'll disable this just for the sake of being more, more vanilla. Uh -huh. Yes, sage advice from Random Pal himself. Nice. Yeah, I thought it was extremely nice that I got a comment from them. You know, um, 
that they would they would notice my patch maybe somebody pointed them to it and then that they would take a, mo- a moment to actually look at the contents and like notice how i implemented it you know and i thought it was very nice and thoughtful and this is the community that we're lucky to have you know for this game all right um so let's get that scar old scar hd here we go now let's just awkwardly slap that in to the vanilla files. So that'll be pretty noticeable, at least. All right. All right, minimal, well, no, minimal performance. So I'll rune. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought this was a really nice texture. I don't know how potato-y it's running for y'all on the stream, but... I actually nuke my volume a little bit. This actually seems like a nice texture. Nonetheless, I don't think it works with BCOM. Yeah, I'm generally a fan of everything made by Titty. As I recall, that's who made this one. And I think it looks pretty good. But it's sitting on top of, you know, the mop version of the vanilla mesh. So if we look at... <clears throat> even if I say, okay... Okay, Johnny, your load order is just bunk. You broke it. You broke it. Let's just put a way at the bottom to rule that out. Like way at the bottom. Basically as low as it can go without really upsetting anything. <clears throat> that was total overhaul, yeah. And yeah, as I recall, it doesn't it doesn't use this type. Whatever custom mesh is in use here with BCOM is not grabbing this texture. Now, I don't know if it would suffice simply to rename the texture or put it in whatever path the BCOM thing wants. Ooh, I just said I thought 0 0.49 has some really cool, you know, um, introspection ad additions where it will show textures and things. We should try that. But first, let's just run over here. Yeah, I can I can almost tell already this is not the same, is it? Yeah, yeah, this is not the same texture at all. Though that it was somewhat hard to tell, I think is a testament to Titty's work in creating a kind of a vanilla friendly friendly look. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Gonzo, thank you. I couldn't remember, you know, I was starting to doubt when the the person on Discord was mentioning it. I was doubting my memory cuz geez, you know, who remembers everything? But yeah, it certainly is not the same texture. It just straight up doesn't work. Let's do... So first off, let's do this. We're running OpenMW 0 0.48. I've been staying pretty strictly on that just because I want to make sure that the mod list themselves... A lot of people won't bother with a dev build, so the mod list got to work for the stable version. And if we look right here, this is not a vanilla path. Okay. So... Let's use 0 0.49, which with my handy dandy script is a simple dash dash dev argument and it grabs my app image that I have locally so I can easily bounce back and forth between builds. My build is about a week and a half old at this point, but it should be new enough to suffice. Thank you, Gonzo says, wow, that's like, thank you. You know, um, I would like to make these scripts, you know, available generally. Sometime, you know, open source some for people that want to kind of adopt a workflow similar to mine. Um, us wannabe hackers. I really got to just make that a thousand out of the box. I digress. And as usual, apologies about the potato quality. But now we can see here, same old kind of muddy texture, right? Let's go 
Why? And I don't know if you've seen this yet, Gonzo, but yeah, you can see here a lot more information coming out here. Model textures coming from beautiful cities of Morrowind HD textures. And look, we can see <clears throat> it is an atlas. Yeah, I know. This is extremely useful. Like, whoo, mad props to whoever added this. Between this and being able to disable things with Lua, it's a game changer. 0 0.49, you know. Um, it's really, it's a game changer. But we can see a few notable things here. We have a Atlas texture and an Atlas normal map. So we aren't simply going to be able to just take Titty's mod as is. We'll have to potentially generate an Atlas of it. If it's not Atlas already, I don't remember. We're not going to do that today, though. Um, I will leave it at the the re recent revelation that Project Atlas has a GitHub repo that has a more up-to-date version than what they have on the Nexus. And one of the things that's notable about their more up-to-date version is they have a Python script that can handle generating normal um, atlases for you. They previously had some batch files that would, you know, call image magic or whatever. Um, the Python script looks a little bit more sophisticated. I haven't used it yet. I couldn't exactly figure out, like, where I had to be when I ran it, you know, and, and this, that, and the other thing. But uh, I would like to go over it on the stream and take a look at it. So anyway, though, yeah, th I think this basically confirms what I said. Uh, excuse me. The um, BCOM, old Scar here, is using a big Atlas texture. And, uh, excuse me. It's not, you know, compatible with Titty's thing. So, actually, let's try to just, uh, uh, what is the name? Oh, okay. Let's try this. Hmm. Maybe it's from the Redoran page, Redoran page. Yeah, okay. Ultra HD. Yeah, okay. There is an Atlas HQ optional file. Okay, well, that's that. We got to take a look. Um, where do I put it? Architecture. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, do, I don't know. Let's look at the vanilla one real quick with um, 0 0.49, shall we? Let's get that extra info. Just so we can know the, somewhat the path and go right to it and not have to kind of be like, oh, uh, where is it? And again, yeah, this is a pretty good texture here. Oh, geez. I goofed. Alrighty. Hmm. Yeah, see? It's a bunch of stuff that in BCOM is all just Alice into one. So, yeah, this I think is a good candidate for testing out the Project Atlas script. Which now that I say that out loud, I'm like, I'm thinking, why not just do it now? And, um, you know, if you're comfortable with navigating GitHub, I would definitely encourage you to check it out because there's also uh, improved lights for all shaders patch. You know, and um, bug fixes to these files, too. So, uh, here we go. All right. 
Atlas Generator Helper. Yeah, so it's not clear to me. Maybe I'm just a dum dum and I'm missing. It's not clear to me where I run this from, what I point it to. So really, the best thing we can do is just do this and hope for the best. And hope not too much stuff blows up into my lap. So let's see. Oof, okay. Ooh, this is pretty good. We are looking at uh, Radaran. 18. Multiplier. Let's just leave it blank. Who? <laughs> All right. So the first question. I do have image magic installed. Okay, so actually, and this is a this is a note right here. So the script is ultimately just calling just calling image magic. And it's looking for, we can see here, it's looking for not the scar texture. So I think this is a little bit out of the scope of what I want to get too deep into for the stream today, but definitely something to check for next time. Uh, with that, though, I do want to take a look at Dynamic Distant Buildings BCOM patch. Let's fix this right now. Or at least try to. Should be pretty easy, I think. Um, okay, yeah, so my approach for this is I'm going to simply erase everything that I have. I'm going to start with a blank plugin. No masters even, except for just Morrowind. Start with a blank plugin. And one of the one of the things that I personally like about my approach is when I do when I do something like this, I generate the plugin that you load in the game from this text file on the left here. And when I keep track of the mod via text, I can see everything that happens here, okay? So this, if you're not familiar with what's called a diff, that's on the right side here, and it tells me at these lines in the file this change was made. And you can see the minus on the left side indicates a removal. If something is added, it's indicated with a green arrow. Okay, and as you can see right here. And this gives me, you know, valuable insight into what's happening. Because what you'll find out is if you have to, for any reason, open your mod in the vanilla CS, no matter what you do, if you click anything aside from exit immediately, you're going to end up with bizarre, unintended changes in your plugin. And as an anecdote, I'll mention that I tried to compile scripts and a abandoned flat player home mod that I'm working on, and I just I wanted to make it compatible with vanilla too, so I compiled my scripts. I dumped it to YAML, looked at it in here, and there were all kinds of just nonsensical changes that the vanilla CS made. Like, I had just had no, like... There was my little script compilations changed just a little bit, and then like thousands of lines of nonsense that I couldn't even parse through. So it's a big pitfall. Um, and I think that's why, you know, some people struggle with issues. I myself struggle with issues until I realize, like, oh, I can look at it in text, track it with a versioning control, a version control system. So anyway, rant away, rant aside, let's go ahead and open the CS. So um, you know, I for a long time kind of thought, oh, I can't use OpenMWCS. It's um you know, it's hard to use. It doesn't have features. But actually, you can do, for the purposes of patch making, you can do quite a bit. And actually, all the patches that I created in the patch collection were made with OpenMWCS. Exclusively. Which does not, by the way, put nonsense changes into your mod. Although, as you would note, the red text warning, it's an alpha software and may have problems. So definitely keep backups. That's why I keep Git tracking of all my stuff. All right, so we need Ghastly Ghost Gate. We need beautiful Cities of Morrowind. We need DDD Ghost Fence. I have like three Emacs windows open. It's not like me. Oh, and I didn't. Huh. 
I goofed. I fully intended to start with a blank plugin. So let's go ahead and do that. To convert YAML. And we have written an empty plugin. We can see we have this change. Whoops. This change over here, we deleted everything, and we have a modified. We can't look at the diff there. We have a modified file here. That's an, that's an empty plugin now. It does nothing. It just has a my name, my author, and description here. That's it. And it says it has masters for no reason yet. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll open the CS again. Takes a minute to chug. You know, when you load a, a bunch of stuff, not feature complete, not sufficiently tested. This is all true in theory. In practice, it's working well. <clears throat> there we go. And I think that should be everything. Hold up. I wrote it down in the readme. Yeah, okay. All right. So one of the things that is key to using the CS, OpenMWCS successfully, I think, is understanding and using the filter system, which uh, is admittedly not the most... If you are not familiar with regular expressions or programming syntax, it's not really the most intuitive thing. And I'll show you. However, when you learn to use it, it's great. It's totally great. So you start off with this record filter, which is pretty cryptic. It doesn't really mean anything. But actually, what you have here is the field that you want to search. So if we note here, we're looking at cells. We got a bunch of fields here including name, the field you want to search, and a regular expression for the thing you want to search for. So in this case, we want to look for a name. We want to look for ghost gate. And here it is. Outdoor cell to four. And it should be immediately visible what the problem is. So first off, before I even move close at all, you can see that the fence seems to glow kind of bright. Maybe you notice that. That's because there's two fences here. It's more obvious in some angles than others. Not only do we see two fences here, but we see two, <laughs> you know, columns, which is pretty awkward. But basically what we want to do is, and what Random Pal recommended, I'll pull that up, that comment up in a bit is we want to take these. So what we have here, I'll just try to, or actually, no. We're going to go, now we're going to go a little bit deeper down the searching filter rabbit hole. We need to find, I want to find a record. So this left side here, I want to find information on these fences in just this cell, three comma four. And you can do that with filter chaining with something like this, going back to here to my example. So we would do something like, and string name uh, let's see I'll just do a splat fence I think I don't remember though exact ID. So anyway, this is what the query is going to look like. Let's paste that into the CS. Into the instances panel. I'm going to close this cells panel. And good, good, okay. Uh, so, so this is obviously wrong. This right here where I'm trying to nail the cell down. So what we want to do here is just say cell Whoop. Uh, three, four, 
boom, there we go. And just like that, we have narrowed down the objects we're looking at to just the things I want to see. And so a quick way I sanity check this when I'm working on it is I will go ahead and let's make sure we're at three comma four cell right here. And we can just go ahead and just delete something. Poof. I don't know if you saw that change there. Let's do something more obvious. Poof. Yeah, there we go. So we know that we're looking at the things we want to see. And it undo, it does undo one at a time. That's interesting. So. This is not a good query, though. Let's do uh, X, G, G. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so it's not a good query because the BCUM stuff uh, seems to mostly follow the underscore EX convention and vanilla has the just EX, no underscore convention. Anyways, though, the, um, the suggested to me by RandomPel, let's pull that up right now. Only three references that are edited by BCOM, I and mean, that's the, yeah, the central pieces, exactly. Otherwise, it's just the same as what's in vanilla, and it was mostly uh, disabling all the extra ones that um, didn't jive with BCOM. But I digress. He says, I suggest assigning them to an invisible mesh, like editormarker.nif. I had no idea that that was a thing. But, um... Let's let's try and find it. Let's look at objects. Model animation. All right, so we want model Hey, look at that. <laughs> it's I guess I'm not that surprised to see there's a bunch of stuff using it. Well, there you go. Show me. Let's see another one. Hmm. Okay. That's... I'm going to go ahead and just assume in the game it doesn't show up like a bizarre red thing so okay anyway so I think what we want to do we want to first off we know that this is a real thing and I can simply just use that name Let's make the cell view a little bit bigger. One thing that's kind of nice about um, OpenMWCS2 is how you can pop stuff out. So I can pop this window out um, and have it be independent of the rest of the CS, which is actually really handy. Less handy is my inability to grow the window. There we go. Gonzo says... Is it because it's only loading the ESPs and not the textures? Uh, I assume it is loading the textures um, because it's reading my global openmw.cfg file. But I don't... Um, I'm actually not sure. I'm going to pop this back in, actually, because I can't alt-tab. So that's a, that's a downside of that. Yeah, right, yeah. So there's a... <laughs> we got, like, the G ghastly texture there. So, okay, anyway, getting back on this. Okay. Let's stay over here in the cell that I have selected first. Right here, 3, comma 4. So...
not trying to edit the reference. I want the thing. Hmm. All right. Okay. There we go. Static. That's the thing I need. So, what happens if I simply do this? Ooh. So that's obviously the wrong one. But you can see the wisdom of random palette play right here. It's a way better approach because versus deleting the reference because the instance, because m maybe it might change subtly and it become a different, you know, instance reference. And then suddenly what I, the thing I'm deleting is no longer the thing that's put in the game. But if I change the base object to simply have the invisible mesh, then it can basically always be compatible no matter what wild changes happen to beautiful cities of Morrowind. So, okay, back on this. We need to figure out one of these is not the one that I want. And it would be this one here on the left. So let's... Right? Right? All right, this guy. There we go. There we go. And so just as a quick sanity check to know which one we want to delete my window here is getting a little cluttered I wish the CS could let me like horizontally split you know we got the vertical split going on here which is fantastic I would love a horizontal split I need to bug out to help about that he's the godfather of the CS him and Nelson all right, what the hell is this thing? Oof, too much. Maybe I'm missing it, but I wish there was an easier way to, like, directly select something in the scene here, you know? Like, uh, no, I didn't want the light source. No, I didn't want nothing. You know, I can't, I can't get it. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. All right. There we go. So that's one fence down. Let's edit that one. Oops, you know what? That's the... Oh, wait. It is giving me... Okay, good. <clears throat> Gonzo says, Have you used the MGX ECS? No, but I really, really want to try it. Um, I'm long overdue to try and get MGXE working in wine. I saw somebody saying they had MGXE working on Steam Deck even, so it's clearly possible. Um, I'm long overdue to try that, but no, I really want to try it. Um, I know Greatness 7 has like worked miracles with, you know, MWSE and MGXE on the CS, and he had like something where he could like select meshes in game and dump them just directly. Awesome stuff. No, I really want to try it. Maybe we'll look at it in a future stream once I'm more confident that I can actually run this stuff reliably. It's just a matter of f figuring out like, you know, what wine tricks stuff do you need to grab? I don't know how experienced you are with making crap work with wine, but it's usually a matter of like, oh, well, what wine tricks do you really need? And and wine will give you like 10,000 lines of output, and there might be two lines in there that are give you a clue of what you need. And so it can be really hard to figure that out. But so I've gotten lucky a few times. And I do intend to do it, you know. Um, 
And I just want to say too, um, you know, my own wine helper program actually, as the example game, uses Morrowind.exe. So respect. All right, fence S. I think this is the thing that I want to kill. Let's no. No. Ooh, I'm starting to get a little. My window won't resize. Oh, no, I was just hitting some kind of a threshold. Okay, then. Modify. There we go. What is this thing? Lots of rocks there. Okay. Putting that filter back. Aha. Cool. That's what I wanted before. Not going to question. Oh, yeah. That's another thing about OpenMWCS, too. It's lots autocomplete everywhere, you know, pretty handy. Underrated program. Ho! Ho! That's no good. So here, obviously... We cannot simply... We cannot simply take the random pal approach for this. Because it's... Doesn't seem to be using a custom mesh. It's a. It's just a distinct placement of the vanilla thing. So there must be some deletions. At least I'm gonna go with that for now. And so one thing that I've noticed is weird about the CS in general is how it picks what cell something is in. I would think this is in three comma four, but it could very well consider it to be in the ghost, uh, you know, the ghost gate. So what I read a two, four. G defense S so two G defense. So two. Yeah, so maybe it thinks it's in 2-4. Let's see. Oh, my. Yeah, lots of stuff matching. This name here, obviously, because this is what the fortress is. I'm going to have to narrow this down. All right. Why does it say I modified that? I guess we'll find out when I dump it to text. Is it? No. This. Hmm. Wrong one. Okay, 
close. Doubt it's that. What are you? Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, I forgot you can. There you go. This is how I'm just thinking to myself, how did I do this the other day? You can, yeah, this is the trick. One weird trick to figure out what it is the hell that you're looking at. You can hover your mouse over it. And there's a little tooltip with the thing. So GG fence gate. Boom. So yeah, interestingly, it seems like all of RP suggestions cannot be implemented because some of the things are, you know, using... <laughs> Todd's hate this one little trick. Yes, Gonzo, indeed. Um, it seems like we can't do it for all of them, or maybe I'm still doing something wrong. But this one, at least we can edit, because this is a clearly a... Yeah, clearly a modded. So we can go ahead and editor marker that one up. And I'm going to have to revisit the one that I deleted because that's obviously not right. So one weird trick. Take that, Todd. S main R. Yeah, here we go. We got another RR path. Ooh, such a great tip. This should just be more compatible and less easy to break, I would hope. All right, so now we notice, you can notice two things here. You can see right here where there's two fences and it's very bright, right here, one fence, not bright. I deleted something <laughs> that I shouldn't have, right here. We gotta fix that. Um, there we go. No, I was trying to. All right, let's look at. I'm going to copy my query out of there. Let's do string modified deleted. Let's undelete that guy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tricky business. Very tricky business. All right, let's <clears throat> Excuse me. Venso 2. Right, it's in the other cell. Three comma four. Fence O two. There we go. Deleted. But something I did was bad. Because this is missing its thing. Okay, instances I've edited. Okay, that's fair. I've only modified one instance. I have no idea how I did it. Or maybe I gave it a... I what did I edit? Hmm... 
not clear what I edited on this thing, but S Ghost Fest Fence S04. This is a Okay, yeah, I changed the It's an activator. So it wouldn't be the border that seems to be missing because those are not activated. They just stay there. <sighs> All right. Well, hmm. <clears throat> I almost want to back out my changes, start with another fresh plugin, and take a good look at this. What is going on here? I just don't. What is going on here? I don't even know. All right, so let's back out all this. I saved it. Um, let's just move that out of the way. This is, by the way, this is something that I shoot myself in the foot with a lot. When you save a plugin with the CS, it's a different place in Windows, obviously, but on Linux, it'll put your patch right there, and that will be loaded last in your load order. You can see that right here. So you can have like shadow plugins sticking around that you didn't know about. It'd be like editing something with Delta plugin and recompiling it, being like, why are my changes not showing? Yeah, I forget about the shadow plugin that I have in local share OpenMW data. So yeah, I try to be aware of that now and not shoot myself in the foot. Digressing again. Let's back on my changes. All of it. And just to show you I'm not crazy. We'll load up Ghastly GG. I will comment out my merged. Oh, yeah, that could be a problem, right? When I was working on that, I didn't have Ghastly GG in my... I had the data pad, and I did, I did load it up. Okay. Deep breaths. Remember where you're going. Try this again. Oh, but wait, I need a. All over the place right now. Holy moly. There. So, this is obviously going to be a bigger project than we have time for on the stream. I'm not going to go too much further into this, and I'll probably work on it later this afternoon or something. Um,. But yeah, I, th I am convinced that it can be thoughtfully done in a way that is more compatible and uh, doesn't have mistakes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. All right, so for posterity here. Beautiful cities. Ghastly GG. The bare minimum <clears throat> of everything, but including the data pass from everything else, which could get a little weird. I don't know. I almost feel like I should make my minimal performance setup just have this just these I think I will do that but for now just for looking at it because I'm not gonna we're not finishing this in 30 minutes this is gonna take me probably an hour or so let's just take a look and see what's bonkers Okay, see, so it looks normal. So I did something. <laughs> Who knows what? And I and I made that go away. Maybe one of the other one of the editor marker assignments I did was bunk. Who knows? But yeah, obviously I gotta be on the lookout for stuff like this. Um, and we want to make sure that it looks right. We don't want to patch garbage in there. So anyway, shelving this for now. And noting here, we did look at that. Um, not come. BCM uh, uses at least textures. 
friends and post. Oh yeah. Did I do that already? I think I did that last night. Uh, this we might get to. Okay. Yeah. So to show you what I'm talking about with this one. We'll start a new game up. Or actually, I know where there happens to be. You know, with containers. I know where there happens to be. One that we can look at really quickly. All right. Um, put a sensatinine right by one of these buckets. The textures are great. Ugh. I goofed again. Just the textures are great. Really good, actually. Um, but the the bucket specifically, the mesh looks like it's from an N sixty four game. And it's very jarring. When you're starting a new game, you're following the guard, and you see all kinds of cool stuff, smooth, nice-looking cups, and then, oh, dear God, what is this, you know, bucket that looks like it's from a, you know, yeah. No disrespect to an old friend. Fantastic work, beautiful texture, but unfortunately, it's not simply the case where you can skip the meshes. And so, yeah, what we have here... Huh. Okay, well, this is not the mesh I was talking about. So this is what you get when you skip AOF containers on Total Overhaul. And that comes from better meshes. And it's reasonably smooth. That's pretty good. Let's back out of that. Yeah, nice looking splash screens for sure. I'm really looking forward to possibly having the tips on there, man. Really looking forward to that. It's a great idea. Um, so AOF containers... Okay, and oh wait, did I? You know what? Yeah, I moved it into my graveyard. Let me show you what I'm talking about here, though. And that's what's lovely about these splash screens is when you're loading the game over and over again to test things. At least you got something nice to look at. Um, and that's where the tips are nice, too, potentially. Yeah, okay. He says, let me know if you have any ideas for tooltips. Some of the que uh, lore quotes you have are great. Some of them need replacing. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I'll keep that in mind. All right. Finally, we can see what I was talking about here. As always, apologies about the potato quality, but yeah. Here you go. There are six sides to this thing, or eight sides, right? One, two. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty basic model. But that texture looks really cool, you know? Whoops. Um, and I feel like on a better model, that could work, you know? But, yeah. So I feel like in the spirit of, like, having it look, you know, like a smooth model, I really think we got to drop this off total overhaul. Maybe somebody who's more knowledgeable than I am knows about how to make the better meshes mesh use this thing. Maybe we can rename the texture to a certain thing. This is AOF containers. Yep, this is it. So so what I would like to do is to take this. Oh, wait. So I just had like an idea. We can look at the vanilla with 0 0.49 and we can look at this one with 0 0.49 and get the ORI output and maybe we can make some magic happen. Hey, all right, let's try it. Dev. Could work. We're down to the last 20 minutes here. <clears throat> Actually been playing, uh, trying to, you know, 
you never have the perfect setup, right? <laughs> but as as things are really like coming out and maturing and stuff, we're fixing issues. I'm starting to plan on a playthrough. And I've actually been playing on my Steam Deck. It actually runs. You know, I have a very conservative draw distance. I can't quite see this far even, but it runs pretty good on Steam Deck. Not going to lie. Definitely playable for me. All right. And the nice thing is, this is beautiful. Printed to my console here. So let's get that out of here. That's going to be my scratch buffer. And up. Oh. Containers. My hope is to simply rename the texture and get to keep using it, but maybe it's not so simple. We'll see. This is a very caveman approach, but sometimes that works. Definitely love the maps. Just had a thought, Gonzo. Definitely love the maps, and I wonder if we couldn't somehow get, like, uh, Tamriel Rebuilt maps. You know, that obviously requires somebody to create the art. But, yeah, just the idea I had. All right. Good. Yeah, Wagner style TR maps. Yeah, me too, man. That would be something else, I tell you. Okay. So, we what we have is we got this bucket which has got a couple textures here. It looks like really back why is it referencing the barrel texture maybe hire the guy himself hey you know what um poodle sandwich actually had jeff baker commissioned to do audio for hospitality papers and there is new authentic jeff baker audio in that mod if you didn't know better have your papers he says that's the new line and a few others um so i mean there is a precedent for that kind of a thing. Hmm. Yeah, this appears to be a way more comp because the the mesh itself is made of a several several textures, right? We have the wood, then we have like the metal bands, and and I th so that's probably what this barrel is here. Yeah, it is incredible. Um, and the thing is, you know, he's uh he's older than I am. <laughs> so if we're going to commission him, we might need to do it soon. Yeah, so I don't think this is going to work. Like I said, this is a bit above my level of expertise with models and stuff. But as you can see here, we've got like really two fundamentally different structures here. You know, uh, three different textures, not counting normals. And down here, we've got quite a few other different one, two, you know, three uh, very other... Well, okay, I mean, all right, I'm going to try it. trying to figure out <laughs> what to actually arbitrarily rename this um <clears throat> the water looked different oh yeah you know maybe because i was uh because i was kind of close and maybe even clipping into it a little bit
rope heavy just becomes this. This feels wrong. Dear God, what am I doing? Okay. Metal strip. Yes, yeah, so this is going to probably look awkward. But let's try it. Just for fun. Okay. But if by some miracle this actually works, well, you know, we can adjust the usage notes and suggest people to do that rename whatever um but otherwise it's gonna, probably going to get dropped excuse me oh uh -huh. Uh, huh. All right. a load order conflict maybe I'm not loading it low enough so let's just put it way at the bottom <clears throat> definitely losing my voice holy smokes <sighs> I've been talking a lot at my day job <clears throat> make sure we're not Stomp. It didn't look like we were using those textures, so let's make sure we're not stomping them out. Okay. <sighs> oh. That's no good. As I suspected, the texture, I, I didn't predict this, but the texture is a different orientation, right? Like you can see the bands going the other way. So yeah, you cannot simply, we would have to like open it in like Krita or, or GIMP or something or Photoshop and like reorient probably the texture. I don't know. Yeah, whoops indeed. Whoops indeed. A worthy effort, I think. Just to satisfy some curiosity, but yeah, um, you know, things like this are rarely as simple as just rename it. It'll be fine, you know, <laughs> has a completely different, you know, mesh for a reason. So, okay. So yeah, that one we're going to go, let's go ahead and since we're wrapping up here, let's go ahead and make that official, shall we? It's a shame. I really like the textures, and I think it's a beautiful mod. Um, it's small, only three models, but, you know, beautiful nonetheless. But it just, it's, <clears throat> the low quality of the model really is kind of jarring, you know, next to, like, better meshes, properly smooth meshes, stuff that looks really, really good, you know. Um, so, yeah. And I also want to make sure that I, when I'm removing something, especially, because I've been kind of bad about this sometimes, and Gonzo, you thankfully have pointed it out, I got to give kind of a reason here, right? Like, otherwise people are just wondering, you know, I know if it doesn't say it there, I know because I made the change. But like anybody else who's not me wouldn't know um, that this was removed or that wasn't here with us while I was doing this. 
or didn't watch the video after the fact, they wouldn't know that we've removed it because the models it uses are rather low quality, you know, so. Small change. Um, it's not June 1st, though. Okay. Okay. So I said I wanted to do smaller releases, and, and I think, honestly... This, and if we can get something else done, let's see, in, in a short amount of time. Ooh, yeah, see, like, this this could easily be a 5.x change because you can drop this into an existing save. It's just changing some GMSTs. Should be fine, but I'm actually going to wait. Maybe we can look at this. Ooh, this... Is it, this is a good, yeah, okay, so we'll get these two before the stream is over. We'll get those as well, and we'll call it 5.4. Boom, just like that. I will open the PR. We'll get you set up. Um, I'll set up the review team. Gonzo, thank you again. Um, awesome. And, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll get this process a little bit more smooth, you know. But I want to see this change log first before I get too crazy doing other things. to crunch. I probably didn't need to run the tests. Seems like they're taking probably more time than they should. Well, this is awkward. All right. There we go. Finally. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, that's... It's, hey, you know, we can work something out. Um, and I, uh, <clears throat> this goes to you and this goes to anybody who wants to help out. If there's something I can do to make things more approachable or to explain things, because um, I realize I have a very, I have a very specific workflow here, you know, and a very specific mental state that I'm in when I do this, you know, because it's the, what I do professionally. So yeah, you know, you're always super helpful. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> it says war. I'm always super helpful. All right. Uh, let's go back up here. Change log. Oh, wait. See? Oh, man. You're probably wondering what? What did you goof now? Well, remember, we're doing 5.4 now, friends. So, you know, this business of... Just tacking onto the 5.3 is not going to stand, man. 5, 4. There we go. Doing it right. All right. Containers removed. Got to use the right word here. Okay, good, good. All right. Dupe Imperial Legion plugin in the CFG generator. CFG generator is a terrible pile of hacks that is relatively untested in terms of automated tests. It's just a fact. Needs a lot of love. And when there's two mods on a mod list that provide the same plugin, unless I go in there and hack it, hack the problem away, you'll get a duplicate plugin. Like that one. 
Thankfully, this is not my first rodeo. But first, let's... Uh, All right, so this is the code, some of it, for the CFG generator. It's a beast. And so you'll notice we've got little conditions here. If you're expanded vanilla, if you're one day modernized, if you're this, if you're that, do various things. And some of the things I'm doing here is we're taking out plugins and... Uh, yeah, L of Hell. Oh, yeah. Gonzo says L of Hell. And yeah, it's it's just very complicated. There's lots of code branches. There's lots of conditions. There's just so much happening here. The overall complexity of this function um, generate CFG. It's just, it's obscene. It's, you know, it's it, it's bad. <laughs> There's just no other way about it. But anyway, this is what we have. And at least, you know, at least I understand what we have to do, which is we have to when we're when we're collecting so the way the cfg generator works is it reaches into the database it sees what mods you're doing and then it figures out what has pace ben thinks turd is a bad word uh well hey you know <laughs> um anyway we group the mods into what has plugins what has bsas what has extra configs and what's just the thing that's a data path you know um <clears throat> and so the approach here is we will exclude the BCOM patch uh, from sharing its plugin. There we go. So I just say exclude. And what you're seeing here by the way, this is a Django ORM database query. So instead of saying, you know, select blah from blah, you know, with like actual SQL, you know, um, so like, you know, something like that, um, except for in theory it would actually work. Uh, <laughs> instead of something like that, we have Python code. Total overhaul is a, a query that I wrote that we can express with Python this way, and then we can further carve down the query with exclude or include or filter or all kinds of other things. You can read the Django docs for days to learn how to do this. Um, and yeah, so what we're doing is we're just creating another exclude here with the right syntax, of course. But we need to be careful because we have to add the mod back in. We're just taking the plugin out, not also the load order. It's very important to have the load order. So to that end, we add it back in like this, slightly differently. Conceptually the same, though. We add it, the name back to a list of things. We're adding to re-add is what I call the variable, hopefully cleverly. Um, but we also, also need to make sure because expanded vanilla mod list also has both of these mods. And, uh, and we can see that right now if we go to the CFG generator when we say... Expanded vanilla. <laughs> Vanilka. Did it work? No, okay. There we go. We got a dupe there, too. Worry not. I slightly know what I'm doing. So we just do this nasty boilerplate really the the code for the cfg generator should be a lot less like all this you know hard coding of specific names we should have you know going back to my other idea we should have some kind of descriptor on the plugin data that says you know um don't include me when uh, you're on this mod list for example or something like that you know exclude when mod list you know and and so we're getting dangerously into the territory of re-implementing mlocks, but I don't know. Like, it might just be, you know, it's not re-implementing mlocks because mlocks doesn't do mod lists and stuff like that. But, like, you know, at a low level, it would be kind of the same thing. So, anyway, not a rabbit hole I'm prepared to dive down now. 
but I am prepared to refresh this page and see the dupe go away. <laughs> Too many valleys. Yeah, okay. One of my changes is bad. This happens basically every time I make this change, which is why this, you know, setup is bad. Line 81, it says. It's not really obvious to me what's bad about that. Nonetheless. We should still have our dupe, though. Yeah, we never took it out. <sighs> oh, ha! Yeah, here we go. Presumably the same thing would have happened if I would have hit total overhaul. I didn't do my query right. You have to tell it. I'm giving it the name. And with that, away, duplicate, blammo, just like that. Yay, it's fixed. Um, oh, and there's one more thing, too, we're going to do before I close the stream. We're already over time anyway, but somebody was kind enough to point out that Concept Arts Plantations has an update for folder paths. They got a, a grass plugin. Um... We'll go through that too, and then we'll call it quits. So let's first off. Don't give dupes. So it's a bit of a hideous process, but that's how you fix the dupes. It's not too painful. Really, the main issue is just, you know, my own brain being insufficient. Um, yeah. TRBC on patch, okay. All right. Okay. Should be pretty pretty straightforward here. fingered there we go mistakenly omitted why did you do that? It was mistakenly omitted. That's a good commit message. All right. Ah, oh, yes. And uh, just brain farted. We have the concept arts plantations. Oh. Hey, Extinguished Hope. Hey, welcome. So glad you're here. Awesome. Just finishing up setting up fourth mod list. Awesome. Yeah, nav mesh. Key. Very key. Well, I'm glad you're here. We're actually about to call quits pretty soon, but I'm just doing a one final change. Um, so yeah, glad you're here. Thank you for hopping in, and I'm so glad that you're enjoying the mod lists. What we're going to have to do here is we have to load this separately, list it separately as a separate mod from the rest of the concept arts plantations. But let's just go up here and see what else changed. If, if anything, right? Oh, no, 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 that's not it. Art, uh, plantations. Okay, so nothing actually changed 
with the main mod really just have this grass patch let's add that in we'll put it under the ground cover here all right it's concept arts plantations <clears throat> excuse me okay concept arts plantations this is what replacers A little hint for people. You're coming back to this later. <clears throat> Time warp. for now I actually think this is a uh, let's see nope. just a replacement for one of the Remy plugins <clears throat> excuse me Cool. But there's a few things we got to do first to make it official. And let's see. Where did I personally load this? Right after. Okay. So let's go down here to ground cover. Excuse me. All right. And then now we need to add this to three mod lists. So let's go ahead and do that. It's got to importantly has to load after the BCOM plugins. These are the ones that it's fixing. So it has to load after them. And then we, of course, round it out with a nice change log entry. And we put it into what? We put it into expanded vanilla graphics total overhaul. Cool. All right, so this is a 
we touched a lot of files for this one. And I definitely want to look at it first. Ooh, yeah, I already found a mistake. Uh, this is not the name of the mod. Let's look at it. <clears throat> uh, Gonzo asks, I was curious if you tested races respected yet, or if you wouldn't mind talking about it, what I'm looking for in a sensible. Okay. Yeah, we definitely will. Um, let me get the crunching going. Um, honestly, to answer the question of what I'm looking for, <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I want something. <clears throat> See, it's weird because I use natural character growth and decay. It's my preferred leveling format. It is the case when you make a custom class that you could, you know, make a character that instantly levels up to level three. Using races respected, I did a warrior with a warrior sign, Nord guy, and he was like, boom, right away, level three. That could be jarring. And so, like, those kinds of things are things that I think about that maybe the average player wouldn't think about, right? Maybe they're using vanilla leveling and they like it, and that's fine. I'm looking for something... that's trying to be thoughtful, you know, about how to make things actually useful. Um, you know, some of the, like some of the vanilla stuff is obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, more useful than the other things, some, some of the other ones, you know? And so I don't want to make too deep a cuts, but I also kind of want to balance things out, right? Like using races respected, actually, I never play as a Breton, but I think my next character is going to be a Breton, you know? Um, just because it kind of was like, oh, okay, you know, those are some interesting stats. Um, so I don't really know what I'm looking for, honestly. Um, birth signs, same thing, you know. I, I don't, I'm not like nerfing for nerfing's sake, you know. But um, I don't know. Like, I also don't want to end up like with somebody who's crawling out of the gate, you know, kind of able to just, you know, be a little too powerful. So that's why I'm kind of doing little tests on my Steam Deck here. I'm like maybe sitting down and. Vanilla Atronach is way too good. Gonzo says, yeah, I mean, once you once you kind of learn the ropes of that play style, it's on, you know. Can't believe me with all the nerfs. Yeah, well, you know. I have actually pulled back on quite a few nerfs. For example, I used to recommend a mod that would simply make the mud crab and, and uh, creeper not salesman. If you're not familiar they're like cheater merchants that will always give you the most money um and i pulled back on that and i added this by my good friend ezzy which not only um keeps the mud crab in the scam but actually adds a new creature merchant that's overpowered because why the hell not we're just gonna have fun you know and it is fun it's cool to see Greek or whatever however you pronounce that it's cool to see him floating around um here or there you know so so yeah um i pulled back on my nerfing but i do have a tendency to to prefer that kind of stuff because Morrowind is an easy game, especially when you play it a thousand times like me and you know where to go to get good fast. So I appreciate things that kind of make it interesting for me. So let's see here. All right. Yeah, we that's right. We wanted to see, I wanted to see these changes in action. So let's do that. Latest updates. List change log. There we go. 82 items. I mean, that's just obscene. That's way too big. So in the future, we're going to try to keep it under a dozen, you know, have small point releases, bang them out each stream, you know, one point release a stream. Maybe tomorrow we'll do 5.5, or maybe we'll add a little on to 5.4 tomorrow. But certainly by next week, you know, we'd be thinking about doing another point release, or maybe we'll fi finish everything today and there won't be another release for a while. Who knows? Um Yeah, this is no good. Oh, no, this is good. Yeah, never mind. The feature I wrote last week, working. <sighs> All right. Okay, well, with that then. With that. Going to go ahead and push those changes to GitLab. Not quite going to deploy the website just yet. We're going to get that review thing going on. It's a little quality control to sanity check my 
brain a little bit. Um, but I want to thank you for joining and viewing the stream, whether you're here live, you know, uh, hacking along with me or you're watching it after the fact. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow for more Morrowind OpenMW hacking goodness. So thank you. Have a lovely day and cheers. <laughs>